his wishbone. I told him you wanted to see him. Yeah. When? About an hour ago. Well, where is he? Well, up in his room, sprawled out on his bed. Well, get back and tell again, will you? All right. Well, now, My name's Charlie Peck. Oh, <laughs> I love that. I'm a lot stronger than I look. Yeah, you'd have to be. Ever been in a cattle drive, Peck? No, sir, but I'm a hard worker. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your hands. Mr. Peck, I admire your gumption, but, uh, you know, those hands would be raw meat before you spent two days on a cattle drive. Oh, <laughs> I don't care, Mr. Yates. I just got to get out of Silver Creek. I've been stuck in this town for three years. You just got to give me a chance. I'm sorry, Peck. The boss is gone, and I can't hire a man I know he wouldn't approve of. What's the matter with you, Wish? Let's go. Come on now, let's go. Look, Roddy's getting sore and you're running more than an hour late now. Well, let's get with it. Fred Harmon. Ever been in a cattle drive, Harmon? Plenty of them. You always drink this early in the morning? Just a quick one with some of the boys. You've uh, ever been in trouble with the law, Harmon? The law, no. Sure about that. Huh? All right, I'll level with you, Mr. Yates. I've been picked up a few times. Uh, for what? Drunk disorderly, mostly. <laughs> oh, well, uh, nothing more serious than that. No. You ever been in prison? You can't beat it, can you? Just make one mistake. Sorry, Harmon. You gonna pass me for something that happened five years ago? No, I'm gonna pass you because you tried to lie to me. And I got no time for a person I can't trust. Next. Yeah. Come on. wagon the supplies. Left the chuck wagon where it was. I didn't get supplies yet. You didn't? I gave you a hundred dollars. What's the matter? Are you sick or something? Nothing's wrong. Well, uh, yeah, I've lost a little curl out of your beard today, Wish. Uh, you must have made the mistake of eating your own cooking, huh? Oh, I get sick of these same old jokes about my cooking and my beard. And I'm tired of grease burns. And I'm... Oh, forget it. I'll be at the store getting supplies. Well, maybe I'll No, do don't. Yeah, I've been... No. Leave him alone for a while.
What's your name? Billy. Billy what? Billy Harmon. Where's your ma? In there. Miss Harmon? Miss Harmon? I'll go get a doc. Here he comes! All right. Now, this is water. You saw me scrub the floor with it, and you saw me clean the dishes with it. Now you got a surprise coming. We don't like baths. Yeah! Oh, you don't? Well, I'm not in the habit of having to make my fellow creatures clean up, so if you want to be little pigs, you can just go ahead and be pigs. Oink, oink, oink! <laughs> Got a broken rib and some painful bruises. But she'll be all right if she just stays off her feet for a while. She wouldn't tell me what happened. Yeah, it's an old story. Just got a husband who drinks. When he drinks, he's mean. He's always sorry when he sobers up, but that don't help her very much. Where is he now? Who knows? Well, somebody's got to take care of her and those kids. Looks to me like you're doing just fine. Oh, hold on now. I got a million things to do, like uh, Mom starting a cattle drive in a few days. A few days? About all she'll need. But I don't know anything about kids and learn a little about women. Looks like you're learning just real fast. There'll be no charge. Uh, here, 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 now. What's the matter with this town, anyway? Well, for a while, the ladies' aid used to help out. You know how it is with crusades, all full of high purpose, and then the steam kind of evaporates. But those kids, they need food, clothes, and shoes, and, well, more than that, they need attention. They're just like little animals. When you're working 18 hours a day just to make ends meet like Mrs. Harmon does, you don't have very much time for telling bedtime stories. Don't just seem right. Well, I can't argue with you there. Nice to meet you, Mr. Wishbone. I don't know how to thank you. Wasn't anything. I tried to get out of bed, but I couldn't. Why didn't you send Billy for the doctor? Because we haven't paid the bill for about a year. We're very grateful to you, but uh, I think I can manage from here on in. Here, you oh. be careful. You know you got a broken rib there. I'll be all right. <laughs> You sure will, as long as you don't get any ideas about chopping wood and carrying water. Those boys out there are big enough to do that for you. No. Now, just lie back and rest. I'll get the boys started on supper, and after I leave, all you have to do is just come out and watch the pot. All right. Now you boys are going to help with supper. Yes. No! I said yes. No, come no. on. You cut that out now. Stop that. Look here what I've got here. See these? These are potatoes. And they're dirty. And your mother's in no condition, so you're going to have to wash them. No! I said yes. Now you come along here. Behave yourself. First you put them in the water. And then you bring them over here and you get a brush. And you scrub these skins until they're bright and shiny clean. You hear? Then you get some kindling. And all your mother has to do is light the fire and tell you when they're done. No! Here!
want for that gold bracelet? Two dollars? Ain't real gold, of course. Uh, I'll take it. Buy it. Stuff it in my pocket there somewhere and put it on the bill. All right. All right. Wait, I'll get it. I'll get it. You need some help with that, I'll get your boy. No, no, I'll manage. It. All right. Just put the thing right up there on top of it. There we are. Bye. Said, where's your mother? Why don't you use a handkerchief? Haven't you got a handkerchief? Do you know what a handkerchief is? Yeah. That's a handkerchief. Here, come on over here. Bought you some presents. See this? Toys. Come here. Let me show you something here. Look. Whoops. See that? Hey, and here's a stagecoach. Look at that. Real iron. And here's a monkey on a stick. He said he'd be back with the money, but I ain't seen him since. Yeah, neither have I. Well, I ain't seen him since I was kidding him about his grub and he got so doggone mad. Well, something's bothering him, that's for sure. Why, she? Oh, no, sir, Mr. Rowdy. I've been looking for him, too. I had these lists to check over, but he didn't sleep in his hotel room last night. You sure? Sure. Well, I mean, I fell asleep waiting for him. And it was daylight when I woke up and he hadn't come in yet. Well, I don't know where he is. At any rate, I'll pay you what he owes you. How All much? Eighty-seven dollars. Wait a minute. Much obliged to you. Thank you very much. I have ever seen them so happy. Oh, well, I was just getting overalls and things, and I happened to see these toys, so... No. You're very kind. Well, I know places you could get an argument about that. <clears throat> uh, got this one for you. Well, it didn't cost anything. I mean, well, it just seemed a shame the kids getting presents and you're not getting anything. Thank you. It's awful pretty. Yeah. You just wait. Oh, yeah. You just wait. Oh, yeah. You just wait. Oh, yeah.
My husband's name is Fred. He's a... He's not a bad man, but he drinks and... Uh, He was in jail once, and, and since then, he, he can't hardly seem to get a job. When he does get one, he can't seem to keep it. I think he thinks the whole world's against him. You know, sometimes a man gets so mixed up, he, he just has to lash out at something. So he... Man's wife is the nearest thing to him. Those are his kids, and, and he can't feed them. And so I do, when I'm able. Ladies' Aid sends things over every once in a while, but I wish they wouldn't. Why? It just makes him worse. We, we ain't got much, but we do have pride. And we don't want charity, and we don't want people looking down on us. Where is he now? Well, you see, I don't know. Sometimes he doesn't come home for weeks. Mr. Wishbone. We're beholden to you, all of us. But I don't believe that you had better come here anymore. because I'm afraid of what Fred will do to you. You want to do what? I want to quit the drive. You can't quit the drive. What am I going to do for a cook? Maybe Mushy could handle it. You know that Mushy couldn't handle it in a million years, Wish. Now, come on. Good cooks are hard to find. You, why, you're more, one of the most important men on the drive. Sorry. You just sit down here and be sensible, will you? I am being sensible. Now, look, I haven't got too many drives left in me. And after that, what have I got to show for it? There's more to living than bouncing over chuck holes and driving a bunch of mangy steers from one end of nowhere to the other. Oh. I knew I should have never let Mr. Favor talk me into subbing for him. After all, I'm the ramrod, not the trail boss. Well, it's nothing against you. I'll tell him that. Uh, swell. But in the meantime, uh, half the crew will quit when they find out we don't have a decent cook. Well, I don't want to cause you any trouble, but I can't go. Why? Just tell me why. It's a personal matter. All right. Uh, far be it from me to butt into a man's personal affairs. He doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to work. Just one thing, though. What's that? Well, it's kind of hard to put. Um... But that money you owe Mr. Case. Oh, that. I ran into him this morning. He said you promised it to him, but you didn't show up. Well, I've been kind of busy. I'll do it right away. Oh, no need to now. I've already squared it with him. You have? Now, you can just square it with me. Well, uh, I can't. Truth is, I've spent it already. You spent it? Now, you'll get it back every cent. You know that.
We had a cow back home. I used to have to milk it every morning before I went to school. I hope we have to teach Billy how now. She was very expensive, wasn't she? Oh, practically nothing. Uh, feed bills all paid till the end of the year. I shouldn't let you do all this, buy the clothes and the food and the... Oh, well, it's just selfish. Selfish? Yeah, I get such a kick out of seeing the kids laugh. I don't know what they're gonna do when you leave. <clears throat> I'm not leaving. It's on account of us, isn't it? I mean, on account of the children. I'd be an awful liar if I said it was just the kids. to you. I'll give you three guesses. You trying to tell me that I did that? About four or five days ago. You came home, just like you are now, drunk. I'm not drunk now. You wanted money for another bottle. When I told you I didn't have any, you didn't believe me. Sorry. I know. I am. I don't even remember. I didn't expect you to. Is it bad? Oh, it'll get better. Did you get the job? Do I look like I got a job? Same old story. I got a prison record. I'm a better drover than any man in this town, but I ain't ever gonna get a chance to prove it. Where'd this come from? Somebody from the village brought it for Tad. I told you before, I don't want no charity. We'll do for our own or we'll do without. Where are the children, anyways? What are they doing in there? It ain't their bedtime yet. We heard a bottle crash outside. We didn't know what condition you'd be in. Daddy, Daddy! Hey, hey, old Tad, you've been a good boy, a real good boy. Where'd you get them clothes? Mr. Wishbone got them. What's he talking about? 
Children need those clothes, Fred. School's gonna start soon. Mine! Yeah, it's yours. Who'd you say brought it? Mr. Wishbone. Who's Mr. Wishbone? He's nice. Answer me, who is this Wishbone? You're frightening him, Fred. Stay out of this! Answer me! He stayed with us when Mom was sick. He's funny. Who is he? He is a kind, decent man who saw Billy steal some flour one day and followed him home. And just stayed on, is that it? Yes, he stayed on. He got a doctor for me and he cleaned this house because I couldn't. He bathed the children and he made food for us and he told them stories. He told them jokes and he made them laugh for a change. All the things a father ought to do that you have never, never done. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna kill him! You know a man called Wishbone? Sure, he used to cook for Favors' outfit. What do you mean he used to cook for him? Well, he ain't going on the drive. Leastwise, that's what the sign says. What sign? They're in a hotel. It says starting tomorrow morning he's going to cook for the hotel dining room. kill you, but now I got me a better idea. As a lesson to the rest of the saddle bums in this town, I'm just gonna beat you to within an inch of your life. Fred, stop it! Fred, huh? stop it! You're killing it! Away from me! Let go. Let go or I'll shoot! Go ahead and shoot! He's hurt bad. Come on, we gotta get you out of here. You saw her. I seen. She shot him. Just like that, she shot him. No. What are you doing? I'm telling you, she didn't shoot anybody. She wasn't even here. Now you got that? Yeah, I got it. Well, all right, you remember it. Because if you forget, you're in bad trouble. I won't forget, honest. All right. Now you get out of here and get him a doctor. Quick! He's dead. No. Come on. That's better. Oh, wish I 
Todd didn't mean it. Todd Daddy, didn't mean I to know, do it. I know, I know. But what if he dies? He won't die. Yes, but what if he does? Quiet. You want those kids in there to hear you? Well, they've got to know sometimes. No, they don't. Not if you use the good sense the Lord give you. What do you mean? You didn't shoot your husband. What? You weren't even there. Now, he'd been drinking. Everybody in Silver Creek knows what he's like when he's drinking. He come after me, and I had to shoot him in self-defense. Oh, I wish you never should have gotten mixed up. It with wasn't us. any of your doing. Yes, it was, my no, doing. No, quiet. You want those kids to grow up knowing that you shot their pa. No, but. Well, then no buts about it. It's a simple matter of self-defense. There won't be any trouble getting them to believe it. Wait till they get a look at this face. Oh, wish. Come on, get some rest now. And remember, you weren't even out of the house tonight. What's the matter? My bracelet. You had it on tonight? I haven't had it off since you gave it to me. I must have lost it at the hotel. Finders keepers. Now, look, you. I'm not exactly in the mood to argue. Give me that or I'll bust you apart. You touch me, I'll yell so loud I'll bring half a Silver Creek in here. Where's Harmon? He's with the doctor. Is he gonna live? I don't know. Now, what'd you tell the doctor? I told him Fred was beating up on you and, and you shot him. Now, let me go. All right. Just be sure you remember that. I ain't so sure I can. What? Lying about something like this makes me an accessory. I told the doctor what you wanted me to say, but... I ain't so sure I can tell the sheriff. Are you trying to tell me something? I got a conscience, Mr. Wishbone. I lied about something this important. I don't know if I'd ever get a good night's sleep, as long as I stayed in this town. Oh, and in some other town, you could sleep real good, huh? Only need $100. $100? I haven't got 25 You can get it. Where? Mr. Yates? I don't work for him anymore. You can get it. I know you can. And if I don't? I'm just trying to help you. I just want to get out of this town so nobody can make me talk. All right, I'll try. Now, I want to be on that stagecoach tomorrow morning. Well, it's late. He'll be asleep. He can wake up, can he? He's right upstairs in this hotel. Wait here. Oh. Who is it? It's me, Wishbone. devil happened to you? Well, I can't talk now. I gotta have $100. $100? Wish you already owe $187. Yeah, I know that. Uh, it isn't easy for me to ask, but I gotta have it. Now, you'll get it back every penny. Now, I got a job here, you know. Yeah, I also know it'd take a month of Sundays to pay back that kind of money. What are you doing with all this money, anyway? <laughs> Rowdy, please. Wish, if I had $100, I'd give it to you, but the money I have isn't mine to give. You really need this $100, huh? More than anything I ever needed. I think I might have a way you could get it. Oh. Just a minute. Yeah, you can just sign this little contract right here. Can't. Why can't you? But a lot of reasons. I got a job here now. Well, they're not going to miss what they've never had. You just sign this contract, and I'll advance you $100 on the next drive. I never thought you'd do this to me. I'm well, sorry I didn't think of it sooner. <laughs> All right, I'll sign, but I've got to add one thing to this contract. Now, what's that? I'll go only if I'm not forcibly detained. Forcibly detained? I don't see why anybody forcibly detain you here in Silver Creek. Here you 
are. Uh, well, I wish it's good having you back with us. What about the money? Oh, yes, I'll get that. One hundred dollars. Now we leave day after tomorrow. I know when we leave. You know, just give them a little more time, you'll turn out even more sneaky than Mr. Favor. <laughs> Nicest thing he ever said to me. There you are. There's only fifty dollars here. That's right. If somebody else needs fifty dollars more than you do. <laughs> I said a hundred. Fifty dollars is more than enough to get you out of town and leave some left over. Now take it and get out. And don't you dare say one word about Miss Harmon or I'll tear your tongue out by the roots. Understand? I understand. All right, then. Get out of here and stay. Doc says you saw the shooting in here. That's right. Who done it? Him. Let's go, mister. How's Harmon? He's still alive. No thanks to you. You got any kind of an explanation? Only it was self-defense. That's very interesting. On account of Fred Harmon wasn't wearing a gun. You better pray he lives, mister. Because if he don't, you're gonna hang for murder. He could rot in there. What are you getting so hot up about if he didn't do it? Nobody said he didn't do it. All I said was Harmon won't press charges. Now maybe there's just something about this thing that we don't know about. There's a lot you don't know about. Harmon took after Wishbone because your friend's been carrying on with Harmon's wife. I don't believe that. And you're the only one in Silver Creek who don't. It's all over town. Wishbone's not only been seeing her, but he's been buying her jewelry and clothes and... say is I didn't do anything to be ashamed of. Wait here for me a minute. I'll be right back. All right. How come they let him go? Huh? Oh, Harmon didn't want to press charges. Huh. How'd I wonder? What'd you say? I was the one that seen it. I seen the whole thing. What'd you see? You made me promise not to tell. Hurry up, mister. We're leaving. Uh, hold the stage. Is it worth $50 to you? That's enough. This is all we can spare. He never shot nobody. It was Mrs. Harmon that done it. Huh? Here. She dropped this on the floor. Who is it? Dr. 
Dr. Sturdivant, ma'am. I'll be by tomorrow, Mrs. Harmon. But all you can do for him is make him comfortable. No sudden movements, of course. I didn't expect you. No way you could have known. The doctor thought I'd get better care at home. I didn't have the strength to argue with him. Fred, it... It ain't gonna heal you none, but I'm sorry. I thought I'd killed you. How'd you feel? Like someone lifted a headstone off of my back. I'd like to get back to the beginning, Liz. Remember the river? I'd like to take an axe and cut right through the debris and get back there. Back to the first days. The first child. Too much has happened. The both of us. You found another man. Yes, I found another man. I didn't look for him. But I found him. I didn't know how you felt about him, but I told the sheriff the shooting was an accident. He's an old man, Liz. Is that better than what we had at the beginning? Now, listen. You can stay here. I will take care of you as long as you're sick. And after that, you're free to leave for good if that's what you want. I appreciate that. But this is my home, Liz. I put it up plank by plank. I put sod against the walls, filled in the cracks with mud. Made a warm place for us. The first summer, I cut a window in the bedroom, screened it off against the flies so the children could sleep cool. I dug a well. I put up a shelter to hang venison. I made troughs to carry off the rain. Sure, I've been away most of the time. But this is my home, Liz. When I get well, I'm gonna run outside and get me a stick and write my name in the ground. Do you want to leave? I was worried about you. Sorry. Thought you'd still be with the doctor. That's being honest anyways. She was very upset. I wanted to see how she was. You're in another man's home, Mr. Wishbone. If you want to talk to Mrs. Harmon, you go ahead and talk. I ain't in any position to leave a room. It's all right, Wish. Thank you. I married Mr. Harmon on September 2nd, 1862, in Sensible, Ohio, on the banks of the river. I've been married to him these 10 years, and I gave him three children. And whatever he wants is up to him. married to him, and I always will be.
That's only right. Say something to the kids for me. Here, now, what's going on? Who said to start without me? No one's starting without you. We're just checking the supplies, that's all. Now, I signed on, didn't I? That means I'm in charge of the supplies. Here, why should put these things away for me? Who's got my checklist? Quince, give that checklist. Now, before we go any further with any of the checking, we open up some of these things and find out what they've given us. Half the time, I get rotten supplies. Now, will you just stand and stop moving around and leave things alone the way you check? Supplies is just ridiculous. You can't check everything at once. You've got to check one thing at a time. First the flour, then the beans, then the fruit, then the bacon. Prince, will you stop pushing things off to him and carry some of the stuff yourself? Yeah, All right, go ahead. Yeah, First, back. we'll take the beans. That's fine. Now, you've got beans there or what? That's beans. Put it in the wagon. Is there a nice, uh, heavy tan leather under those beans you're putting in there? Sacks of flour and five pounds of sugar and a pound of tobacco. We got everything for a change. Well, Mr. Wishbone, I ain't never been a man of the world. You think this hat might help? It isn't your hat needs changing, it's your head. Stagecoach in yet? I, I'm meeting a friend. Just in time, stranger. Coach stops here every afternoon at four. Better get the coffee on the fire, Jesse. You stay put. I'll shoot the first one that makes a move. You put your hands down. Yeah, I'd like nothing was wrong. You try to warn them, you'll all be dead. I think I winged one of them. You'd better ride into Cottonwood and tell the sheriff that. You'll be wanting to join the posse, won't you? Sorry, friend, no time. No time, mister, that was a holdup. There's five outlaws to hunt down, and each one went off in a different direction. And we got 3,000 head of beeves to ride herd on. Now, that takes more men than 50 outlaws. Come on, Mushy, get the pistols and the sacks. Coffee, Mr. Scarlet? Too tired to swallow, Mushy. Coffee, Mr. Quint? No, thanks, Mushy. 
I figure it's 16 miles. Oh, you better be right. You hear something strange? Like what? Listen. Colonel Reed. Colonel Reed. Sergeant Decker, re report. Colonel Reed. Sergeant Decker wishes to report that the mission is accomplished. This is one of those stagecoach robbers. I told you I got one of them. Hey, you reckon there's any money in this box? Uh, one way to find out. It says there's a thousand dollars in every packet. Wow. Must be 50 packets in here, at least. We better get it back soon. There's got to be a posse out looking for it. Uh, we do that. It's two days' ride to Cottonwood. That means anyone that was sent be gone for four days. I can't even spare one man that long. Yeah, that posse runs across one man right along with all this money. He's likely to get the wrong idea. Well, what are we going to do then? Only thing we can do, take it with us to the next town. That's six days ahead, Pine Valley. I have to do. We'll turn it over to the sheriff there and give him a report. You mean we have to ride herd on $50,000? I mean, you are going to be riding herd on 3,000 head of beef, and that is all you got to worry about. Wishbone, you take charge of it. Rope it up good so nobody's tempted to check it out. Keep it in the wagon with you all times. Right. Irv, Blaze, get some shovels. Speed him in. You know, the posse ain't gonna like it. They find out we got the money that they spent all this time looking for. I ain't worried about the posse. It's him and the people he was supposed to meet. Wishbone said there was some more with him. It figures they expect a rendezvous somewhere around here. Yeah, when he don't show up, they're gonna come looking for him. For $50,000, I guess they would. <laughs> Ah, you ain't started the ball yet. It's still the cool of the morning. I tell you, Pete, I could have had me a gentleman's job tending bar down home. I don't know why I signed up on this drive again for anyway. Oh, that's easy. It's light work, short hours, good pay. Beef is gonna turn to dust if we don't get to water soon. Where's the next water hole? Salt Flat Springs. It'll be a couple of days. Two days? Were you leading us by way of the Sahara? Look, I ain't no Moses. I can't touch one of these rocks and make water spurt out of it. Maybe if you could, you might be of some use. Now, who put the burr under his saddle? Sometimes I wonder why I joined up with this blasted drive. Oh, that's easy. Light work, short hours, and good pay. <laughs> Charming, if you're done beautifying yourself, I'll show you about gathering firewood. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, what are you grinning about? Nothing, Rowdy. Nothing. Just dreaming. Oh, well, it must be some dream. Well, I'm in this rainstorm, see? Only it ain't raining rain. It's raining greenbacks. And they're coming down faster than I can catch them. Yeah, well, what do you do with these greenbacks after you get them? <laughs> well, I ain't dreamed that far yet, Rowdy. Rowdy, if all that money was yours, what would you do with it? Uh, I don't know. Live high, wide, and wild for a while, I suppose. Maybe even travel. <laughs> what about you, Jesus? Oh, that's easy. In the village where I come from, there is a small church with a high bell tower. But there's no bell in the tower. There was no money for a bell. Bells? Well, you can buy all the bells you want, but I know what I'd do. 
Well, I'd buy me the biggest, fanciest saloon in town, and I'd hire me 12 of the prettiest gals you ever saw. And I'd dress them up in silks and spangles. Jim, you like a partner in that saloon? Not necessarily. <laughs> you all seem mighty pleased with yourselves. What would you do, Mr. Favor? Well, if you had the $50,000. Well, yeah, that. Well, since it ain't mine, I ain't even thinking of spending one red cent of it. A couple fellas riding in the cab. They alone? As far as I can tell. In charge here. That'd be me. Name's Favor, trail boss here. Glad to meet you, Mr. Favor. I'm the deputy sheriff of Carson County. Uh, Jim Norton here and I are with a posse that's looking for five outlaws that held up a stagecoach. Yeah, well, I think you've come to the right place, and I'm glad to see you. Well, just what do you know about him? Well, I think we might have some of what you're looking for. Isn't your name McKeever? Lieutenant McKeever? Rowdy Yates. Ah, oh, good to see you. Yeah. This man was my commanding officer for over a year at Fort Yuma. Good soldier, too. Well, now, this sure is a stroke of luck. Running into a, an old comrade in arms like Rowdy and maybe catching up with the men we've been hunting. Uh, you did say you'd seen him, Mr. Favor. Well, one of them came into camp last night, but he keeled over dead from a bullet wound. Had a big box of money with him, though. Well, you sure do have what we're looking for. Rowdy, I wish I had time to stick around and jaw with you for a while, but uh, the posse's waiting for us, and we got the rest of those outlaws to find. So, with your permission, Mr. Favor, I'll relieve you of that money box, and we'll be on our way. Yeah, sure. Quince, pick up the money box from Wish. Just what are you doing in the wagon? Mr. Favor wants the money box. Well, he put me in charge of that box. If he wants it, I'll take it to him. Hey, the troubles are over, Wish. You can turn your box over to the sheriff here. Oh, that's good news. I'm sure glad to get rid of it. Him? Well, he's one of the outlaws. So's he. First man that makes a move, the trail boss gets it. Keep your gun on him, Norton. All right, mister, I'll take that box. trouble, Mr. Favor. If you're smart, you'll give me that box and let me ride out of here. Something to tie him up with. Don't you understand? I've got friends out there. And when Norton tells them what happened to me, they're gonna come after me in that money. And they'll do whatever they have to to get me back. There was only five of you pulled that job, and I got one of them. Now we got you. That only leaves three against all of us. There was only five that you saw. There's twice that number waiting at the rendezvous. I want a guard on Big Mouth all the time. Lenny, you'll take the first watch. They'll come after me, Mr. Favor. And if they have to kill to get me back, they'll kill. Well, isn't it part of a trail boss's job to keep his men alive? Or maybe you don't care what happens to your men. so funny. You wouldn't understand. I'll try it. Well, it is funny. All of you risking your lives for money that wasn't even stolen. 
That's a lie. Mushy and I saw you take the money off that stagecoach with our very own eyes. Oh, sure, we took it. But we didn't steal it. We were reclaiming what was rightfully ours. Uh, oh, my, ain't you got the slick tongue, though. You can twist just about anything around to your way of thinking, can't you? And I'm telling the truth, Mr. Faber. That money was stolen, all right. Not by us, from us. In a way, some of it belongs to you, too, you and your men. Just how in the ever-loving do you figure that? Oh, you heard Rowdy say I was an officer with the Rebs. How many of you here, sir, to the South? I did. Most of us. That's what I thought, most of you. That means you do have a claim to that money. Every man in the South has a claim to it. Were you trying to say we got a legal claim to that money? That's just what I'm saying. Can you prove that? Sure, I can prove it. Any of you here ever hear of Reed's Folly? Yeah, I was in the outfit. Ran short of supplies and ammunition. Reed was trying to raise money to replace it. He raised over $50,000. But before we got a chance to use it, the war ended. So we hid it away. We figured we'd need it when the war started up again. Except the war ain't starting up again. Well, the feds knew about that money, too. They'd been looking for it. Last month, they found it. Confiscated it for the U.S. government. But that money doesn't belong to the U.S. government. Now, I got the authority to open that box and give every man jack of you $100. You just let me leave here with the rest. $100? More than I make in three months on this drive. It's more than you'd make in 10 years in prison, which is what you'd get if you took any part of that money. But Mr. Faber was raised for the South, and where the South? After considering all sides of the argument very carefully, here's how it is. No matter how you slice it, that money is stole. So that's the end of it. I don't want to hear no more about it. You heard the big boss. He'd rather see you die than share in money that's rightfully yours. Maybe you like working for a man like that. I sure wouldn't want him for my boss. I wish you'd been our mess chief at Fort Yuma. Yeah, well, if that's where you served, I'm sure glad I didn't. Are you thinking about your share of that money, Quince? You want your hundred dollars? You bet your bottom dollar I want it. That chance I've got of getting it. Find them strays? Yeah, I found them. Four of them. That is, if you got any use for slaughtered steers. They hadn't even had the guts to leave this note. Oh, I can tell you what that note says. It says this time they just killed beeves. But unless you let me and that money go, the next time they'll be killing men. Do I read it right? You read it right. Well, that note's from Colonel Reed, and Colonel Reed always means what he says. Now, why don't you be smart and do what he wants? One extra lookout's posted point, flank, and drag. Yes, sir, man, you've sure got a stubborn trail, boss. He doesn't take money that's rightfully his. He doesn't even care if his men get killed. Let's go.
sign of the enemy yet? They're out there, you know, somewhere. Say nothing. You don't need to worry for a while, Mr. Favor. They made their point. Now they'll give you time to come to your senses and let me and that money go. Of course, if you don't, there'll be more trouble waiting around the next bend and every other bend. They killed one of my men. What didn't deserve it? to see your men die. But of course, you made the choice. And there'll be more of you dying unless he lets me go. The choice is still his. No, it ain't. The choice is ours. I didn't sign on to get killed, Mr. Favor. If you don't let him go, I'm pulling out. Pay him off, Roddy. I want all the money I'm entitled to, Mr. Favor. Meaning? Meaning my hundred dollars from that box. You get the money you got coming to you, and that's all. Now get out. My share, Mr. Favor, and now. Pay him off, Roddy. Let him have his gun back. He may need it to scare rabbits. Pete. We'd better get the extra top on that wagon. Yeah, I'll take care of it. I suppose you got more troubles for me. Well, just a little. That water, we used most of it for the fire. We're about down to nothing. Oh, we'll be at Salt Flat Springs tomorrow. There's plenty of water there. It better be. You're a brave man, Mr. Favor, and a stubborn one. But a smart general knows when to surrender. I ain't no general. Keep out of my way. Give uh, a little shut eye, and I'll uh, take over the water. All right. easier if I weren't wearing these. Well, I can't let you loose, Lieutenant. Sorry, it's a favor's orders. You always were good at taking orders. You were the best sergeant I ever had. What happened anyway? What do you mean? I mean, what happened to make you turn outlaw? Well, I'm no outlaw, Rowdy. I was telling the truth about that money. You're trying to tell me this is the only job you ever pull? No, I mean that when we do pull a job, we do it for a cause we believe in. Who's we? Some of the old outfit. Others who think as we do. How'd you get started? I was tired of drifting. You remember how it was in the Army? It was a good life. We fought hard. There was purpose and meaning to what we were doing. Wars don't go on forever. No, they don't. And suddenly I was out of uniform, washed up. You could have gotten yourself a job. Doing what? Cleaning saloons? Pitching hay? Being a stable boy? <laughs> All I'd ever known was the army. There was no more army. Well, you could have gotten something better than me an outlaw. I did find something better. I ran into Colonel Reed. You know, when I, uh, when I served under you, you used to talk a lot about honor. Where's the honor in what you're doing now? Honor means different things to different men, Rowdy. I believe in what I'm doing. 
Doesn't it bother you a bit that the rest of us are making out all right out of uniform? Or do you need a war to feel like a man? I'll take over now, Rowdy. You think about it, Lieutenant. I don't, uh, I don't see any honor in being a renegade. Flat Springs. swallows of that stuff and we'd all be rich. Well, I could have told you it'd be poison, Mr. Favor. You see, Colonel Reed knew about this waterhole, too. You ready to talk business yet? Beat, how far to next water? About uh, three days to Cactus Creek. One thing about it, they can't poison that whole creek. Quarter of a canteen for each man, each day. Not a drop more. And for him, not a drop. He does that water, he'd probably die of thirst. His friends should have thought of that when they poisoned the water hole. All right, let's get going. Senor, two swallows, no more. You're a fool, Jesus. You should never show quarter to the enemy. Am I really your enemy, Senor? Camp. Too much heat and no water. Figured he should stretch out. I'll see you later, Scarlet. Scarlet tells me you're beat. Hmm? Well, uh, I'm not planning to die if that's what you're waiting for. Here, have some of that. The morale in this outfit's. Low, Rowdy. You drove us a weak men. Yeah, what makes you say that? Mr. Favor gave an order. No water for me. You're the second man today who's disobeyed it. Is that right? Well, if Colonel Reed gave an order, I suppose no one would disobey it, huh? You bet they wouldn't. They are soldiers. But we're not soldiers, Lieutenant. We don't like killing, even if it's an enemy. Maybe that's weakness, and maybe it's strength. I suppose you'd understand that, though. What's your reason for disobeying orders, Rowdy? You were a good officer once. Maybe I owe it to you. What are you doing here? Checking on the prisoner, that's all. Any checking needs to be done, I'll do it. Out. You come to surrender, Mr. Favor? Yeah, 
Don't guzzle it. Why? Well, if I'm gonna turn you into the sheriff, it'd look better turning in a live one than a corpse. And that's your only reason? To keep me alive so I can go to jail? What else? You were an officer yourself, Mr. Faber. Let's talk soldier to soldier. Is it any different from uh, talking man to man? <laughs> yeah, soldiers live by a different set of rules. The rules of war. You're losing this war, Mr. Faber. You're being outmaneuvered, outdeployed. Your losses are mounting every day. If you're a wise commander, you'll come to terms with the enemy before he annihilates you. Yeah, but I ain't no commander. The only war I'm fighting is to survive. That battle of survival is one more victories than all the cannons and the cavalry charges put together. So I'll take my chances on you, Colonel Reed, because he's just another man. And from what I know of him, not too much of a one at that. Listen, Potter. I must set the fuses just before we come over that rise. Your friend, Colonel Reed, again. Why ain't that herd moving? I didn't get orders for it to be stopped. Look, if you fellas came to complain about the ice water, I'm afraid I can't help you. It ain't that, Mr. Faber. We're through. You don't say. That's right. We've had it plumb up to here. We don't aim to risk our lives anymore. We want you to give him his money box and let him ride out of here. Or you can take that herd and push it. Uh-huh. Is that how you all feel? That's right. It ain't that we ain't stuck up for you, Mr. Favor, because we have. Already one man's been killed. We've been set fire on, water's been poisoned, but this, this explosion, that's the last straw. Could have killed us all. I see. Oh, you want me to give this thief back the money he stole and let him go? Is that it? That's right. And maybe you'd like your share of that money first. Well, he did say you uh, had some of it coming, you know. Not anymore, Mr. Faber. It's blood money now. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. Because he's staying with us. Him and the money. If I let him go, I wouldn't be any different than he is. Then you just better pay us off, Mr. Faber. Now, wait just a minute. Look, uh, Mr. Faber's never asked you men to do anything he wouldn't do himself. What he says is true, also. You let these men get away with this, no telling who they're gonna rob or kill next time. 
You wouldn't want that on your little consciences now, would you? You're always bragging what great fighters you was in the war. What's the matter? Are you afraid of a few renegades? Don't beg, Wish. Either they're up to staying, or they ain't. Mr. Favor, Mr. Favor. Jesus horse came in without him. And I found that note on his saddle, and it says if that lieutenant don't deliver the money by noon, he'll be dead. What do you got to say now, Mr. Favor? It's what I said before. He stays with us, so does the money. But that's Jesus out there. I know it. Well, you can't leave him there to get killed. We got to turn McKeever loose. You're sure whistling another tune mighty fast, ain't you? You, how do you feel now? Well, it's different now. The only way we can get Jesus back is trade McKeever for him, then we ought to do it. <clears throat> when? When are you meatheads ever gonna learn? Those are renegades out there you wanna deal with. They got no honesty, their word don't mean nothing. As long as each side has got a hostage, it's still a standoff, no matter what they threaten. They won't kill Jesus for fear that we'd kill McKeever. As long as we got him, he's our insurance that Jesus stays alive. We'll trade when the odds favor us. Yeah, well, I don't see it that way. No, you don't. Do you really think for one minute that if we turn McKeever and the money back, that they're gonna let Jesus go? He could identify every one of them. Smartest thing in the world they could do is to kill him, and that's just what they'd do. Well, look, these men are soldiers. They're gonna fight by the rules of war. They're trash. They got no rules. In any case, this is the way it stands. You can go along with the herd, and you can tuck your tail between your legs and take off. We stay, Roddy. Ready? You think Colonel Reed means what he said in that note? He means it. Uh, Jesus never hurt anybody in his life. I know that, Rowdy. I don't feel any better about this than you do. Look, there's only one way to save Jesus. Let me go with the money. Trust you? You trusted me once. Yeah, but then you were an officer and a gentleman. I still am. When I give my word, I keep it. It's a matter of honor. Honor? Uh, what about Colonel Reed? What happens if he doesn't agree with your word? Well, you forget, Rowdy. Colonel Reed's an officer and a gentleman, too. He'd respect my commitment. I swear it. You know where to find him? I know. It's Jesus' life. All right. All right, you can go on one condition that I go with you. No, that is complicated. Let me handle this alone. You gave your word, and I'm going to give you a chance to honor it. I want to make sure Jesus is all right. It's going to be that or no deal at all. OK, let's get going. <laughs> Glad to see you back, Lieutenant. Senor, I am fine. Lieutenant McKeever reporting back to duty, sir. Welcome back, Lieutenant. And brought the money, I see. 
Yes, sir. Well, proves my strategy was successful. They were forced to surrender. Who's he? Rowdy Yates, sir. He's rammer out of that trail drive. He's the one who let me go. Well, why'd he ride back with you? I gave him my word we'd release that drover to him. Let him ride out of here. You're absolutely right, Lieutenant. The objective being to effect your release and retrieve the money by whatever means, it was your duty to tell any lie necessary to achieve that result. But I wasn't lying, sir. Mr. Yates, I'm glad you've come. You take a message back to your trail boss for me. I came here for this man, Colonel. I ain't leaving without him. Well, I'm afraid you are, Mr. Yates. We need him more than you do. You gave me your word that he'd back you up as an officer and a gentleman. That's right, sir. I did. And you did absolutely right, Lieutenant. I've told you that. Any strategy at all to outmaneuver the enemy. This is your great colonel that can do no wrong? Now, Yates, you tell your trail boss for me. If he wants to see your friend here stay alive, is to make no further effort to rescue him and give no information whatsoever to any posse he might chance to meet. In other words, forget you ever saw us. If he violates those conditions, I'll have this man executed immediately. <laughs> Now you may leave, Mr. Yates. You made a promise, Lieutenant, on an old friendship. Sir, I did promise him. On my honor. There's no honor where the enemy is concerned, Lieutenant. There's only defeat or victory. Now, you've brought us a very fine victory. You should feel quite proud of yourself. Mr. Yates, hope you enjoyed your trip. Sorry. You just had to go against orders, didn't you? You just had to do it your way. Oh, where's Jesus? That was the whole point of the trip, wasn't it? They wouldn't release him. Oh, you've really fixed things up, Rowdy. They got everything they want. The lieutenant, the money, and Jesus. Oh, McKeever gave me his word. And you believed him. We gotta go in there after Jesus now, Mr. Paper. No, no, Pete's right. Wouldn't do any good now. They got everything they want. They're not about to be there. Oh, they'll be there. What makes you think so? Well, I don't guess that lieutenant friend of yours uh, checked the box too carefully to see if all the money was there or not, huh? No, he trusted me. Well, he shouldn't have trusted me. Wasn't nothing but bags of sand in that box. Figured it'd be too tempting to somebody, so I put it someplace else a few days back. Well, that means something. Yeah, they ain't got what they want. As long as Jesus is worth $50,000 to them, they ain't gonna lay a finger on him. What are we gonna do now? You, you don't do nothing. You're through. You're through as drover. You're through as ramrod. You're through as anything. Now, get out of here as quick as you can. Pete, we'll be going after Jesus. I'll pick him up. I'll take the money with me. Well, just the two of you alone going in there against all that bunch? Just me alone. Ain't how many that counts is what you got to bargain with. Uh, you still here? You're forgetting something, aren't you? What is it? Well, I'm the only one who knows where they're keeping Jesus. So you gotta take me along. Right. Let's go. further is it? Oh, about a half hour's ride that direction. All right, we'll leave the money here. Pete, you'll be staying with the money. Rowdy and I aren't back a couple of hours. You take it back with you and get the herd moving. I don't get it. You, know, you ain't supposed to get it. You're just supposed to be guiding. So you get guiding.
I must congratulate you, Mr. Yates. You completely outwitted my naive lieutenant, taking the money out of that box. He didn't take it out? I did. He thought it was still in there. Who was he? Gil Favor. He's the trail boss. Well, that's more like it. One commander negotiating with another. All right, Mr. Favor. It would appear we each have something the other man wants. How do you propose we resolve it? Give us Jesus, you get the money. You haven't brought the money with you. Of course not. Where is it? About a half hour's ride from here. And how do you propose I get it? Let Jesus go with Mr. Yates and myself, and you can send two of your men along with us. They'll come back with the money. We'll go our way. How many of your drovers are planted out there ready to ambush any men I might send? I've got one man out there with orders to take the money back if we don't show. Why should I believe you, Mr. Favor? Well, like you do, I'll give you my word as an ex-officer and gentleman. No. No, I won't deal, Mr. Favor. No smart commander plays into the enemy's hands, makes the enemy play into his. Now you hear my terms. You ride out of here now, alone, and you bring that money back. Now, after you've done that, I'll release you and your comrades. No chance. That promise has been made and broken once already. You prefer that we have you all executed? Oh, but then you'd never get that money, would you? That's quite right. So I propose to do it one at a time. Lieutenant McKeever. Yes, sir. Assemble a firing squad. A firing squad? Apparently, we have to convince Mr. Favor that we mean what we say, so we'll execute one of his comrades. And since, Mr. Yates, you've been the most trouble, I think you deserve the honor. After that, Lieutenant, why, we can let Mr. Favor have a second opportunity to bring us the money. You'd really do that, Colonel? This is war, Lieutenant. We have got a battle to win. Assemble a firing squad. No, sir. There'll be no firing squad. Lieutenant McKeever, I'm your commanding officer. I've given you a direct I'm order. I'm not my commanding officer anymore, and the war's over, Colonel. Only I've been too big a fool to know it. Can't you see he's wrong? These aren't soldiers we're fighting. They're civilians, decent, law-abiding citizens. We got no right to take their lives. Lieutenant McKeever, I'm sure I don't have to remind you of the penalty for refusing to obey a superior officer. I order you for the last time. Assemble a firing squad. No, sir. Lieutenant. dead. That means I'm your commanding officer now. But I don't demand your unquestioning obedience as he did. I have no stomach anymore for firing squads and killings in the name of a cause that no longer exists. We're not a military unit. We're renegades. Soldier puppets. I know that now. So, I'm asking you, to disband this group here and now. Mount up and ride out of here to whatever homes you have left to go to. It'd be easier, Lieutenant, if you'd order us to go. No more orders, Katie. I ask you to go. Back to camp, wishbone to have you fixed up in no time. I gave him my word of honor. I meant it. Oh, I never thought any different.
pushing them a little hard, don't you think? Yeah, we'll keep pushing them hard till we reach some decent grays. Well, that's about what Miss Fair would say if he was here. Of course, uh, it's always a ramrod. It's a dirty dog passing down the orders to his men. Oh, uh, being trail boss and ramrod must be a little hard on you, huh? That's right, Jim. But until Mr. Favor gets back, you're ramrod. Now, hold on. You can't do that to me. It's already done, Jim. <laughs> Wagon still following us? What's up ahead? There's plenty of good grazing. There's a plateau up there on the hills. Grass about a foot high and so green, and if I was a steer, my mouth would be watering to get to it. Is the climb too steep for the bees? No. Well, then what's wrong? I think you better come take a look for yourself. Mr. Ryan, this is the trail boss. Got nothing different to say to him than I said to you. Well, why don't you try saying it anyway? We've been around enough buffalo back there, and it's taken us weeks. We still ain't got him pinned down good enough to move him for the kill. Yeah, well, we got a herd over 3,000 head down the flatlands. Poor grazing. All right, I'm sorry to hear about that. We can move him through here tomorrow. You could. But you won't. Why? You ought to know as well as I do that them buffaloes more skittish than even your steers. Now, you start moving that herd through here, you're going to stampede my buffalo. Might lose half of them, maybe even more. Yeah, you got a point there. I can't argue with that. Hey, Cole. Yeah, Billy. You ever been this close to a trail boss before? Once or twice. Are they all as fearful about arguing as this one? How long is it going to take you to finish up with the buffalo? A few days. Maybe a week. All right. I'll hold them three days, then we're coming through. You'll bring them through when I let you. Three days, mister. I wouldn't give them three hours, Rowdy. I, uh, I didn't catch your name. Yates. Name's Yates. How many drovers you got? Twenty-five. I got 40 hunters up here. Including those two? They're on a personal payroll. Kind of insurance against trouble. Look, Yates, you're going to have to leave 10 men with that herd all the time. Now, you make your move before I'm ready. I'm going to have 40 of my men against 15 of yours. It's kind of bad odds. I ain't a betting man, Ryan. I'm going to send a couple of men down to keep an eye on that herd. Well, that's all right. You just keep them out of my way, understand? I let you start moving that herd up here. I'm going to know about it. You already know about it. Three days. <laughs> Cows, how you ever got Mr. Favor to agree, I'll never know. Because I told him if he'd bring along a few milking cows, I could make better meals for all his handsome young drovers. Yeah, and they keep dropping calves all over the state of Texas. We never will get out of it either. I'll get rid of the calves. Don't worry about that. Wishbone? What for? I ain't mad at nobody. So, Rowdy, I still don't like the way them buffalo hunters are acting. 
Well, I'm just going looking for trouble. Half the time it comes looking for you. Yeah. See those calves? What calves? Them calves? Take them out and shoot them. Take them out and shoot them? Right. Me? You. Mr. Wishbone, don't you want me to go down the stream and get some water or something? Well, are you waiting for those calves to turn into cows? That's a good idea, Mr. Wishbone. I bet that's what would happen if you kept them. You can't keep calves on a cattle drive. It slows the herd down too much. Anyway, there are going to be two or three more calves, maybe tonight. Now, be sure you take them far enough away so the shots don't spook the herd. How do you how do you feel about these calves? Uh, I am not certain, Senor Mashi. I will think about it sometime. Well, look at them scrawny little runts. I mean, it'd be a kindness, wouldn't it, to put them out of their misery? If you say so, Senor. Well, then take them out and shoot them. Senor Mashi, it would be like killing babies. It's gonna hurt you. I'm a liar, I guess. I wouldn't pull that trigger. Unless you're gunning for people. I'm Emma Teal. Were you really going to kill them? Well, sure I was. I mean, on a cattle drive, you're supposed to. I mean, they slow the herd down. I mean, Mr. Wishbone told me to, I mean. Well, I was trying. Betsy! We just got our first calves. Isn't that nice? Well, now, hold on. I ain't supposed to give them calves to nobody. I mean, I ain't supposed to kill them. Are you going to? Yeah, I might. Well, what are you going to do with them anyways? Take them to the wagon. Keep them till we get as many more as we can from drives going through. That's a pretty small wagon. I mean, when them calves start growing up. <laughs> <laughs> we won't stay out with them that long. We'll take them to our ranch. You got a ranch? Yeah. A fallen down house. 50 acres of fenced in nothing. We got a ranch. Betsy, give me a hand with the calves. Kind of surprising your men folk didn't come to help you. Only folks we had of any kind was Pa. He died a year ago. Uh, Miss Emma. Uh, Mr. Wishbone, he was expecting. I mean, I mean the cows was expecting. Well, anyway, there's going to be about three more calves around. Uh, maybe by tonight. Well, more than likely, he'll let me shoot them. I mean, uh, just like I shot these calves. And I could bring them right back to the same place and shoot them. I'd appreciate that. You know, you're awfully nice to us. Betsy, come on.
Well, shot them both, Mr. Wishbone. I mean, you can't keep slowing the herd down just on account of a couple of scrawny little runs. No, and you can't keep slowing the herd down by not feeding the men either. Get over the wagon and put the plates out. But, Mr. Wishbone, you said maybe there's going to be three other calves. Yeah, well. Well, if I got to do it, I got to do it. If you got to do it, you got to do what? Take him out and shoot him. Oh, you're getting real bloodthirsty, aren't you? Well, you don't get over the wagon and get those plates out. You're the one liable to get shot. And here, give me that. You're not going to be shooting the plates. <laughs> So is the breakfast. Yeah, mushy? Down by the stream getting water for coffee, but... All right! Which one of you Jaspers is a smart aleck? Well, I don't see anybody laughing. What's the joke? I went out to milk a cow, and there wasn't one of them there. Could be somebody's trying their hand at a little rustling. Yeah, well, if they are, we're sitting ducks for it. Ground's pretty hard. Do you think we can uh, track those cows, Pete? I think so. Mm. Now, Scarlett, Jay, get some rifles. Yeah. Oh, but you haven't had your breakfast. Yeah, it'll wait. Where are they going, Mr. Wishbone? I don't know. But I got the strongest feeling I'm gonna be able to blame this on you. wagon that's been following us. Yeah, these people are a little greedy. They want the cows, too. Scarlet, run up these cows and start them back towards camp. Yeah, will you? something to think about for a while. <laughs> Better be careful with that thing. You're liable to hit something. If I'd wanted to, I would have. Oh, Emma, look, the wagon's ruined. You did that? Why? I don't like rustlers, even if they're women. Those calves are ours. They were given to us. And the cows? Were here when we got up this morning. So I let them nurse the calves. I didn't see no harm in that. Maybe I made a mistake. I'm sorry. What good's that? Well, I'll send some men over and have them fix it. Meanwhile, I can't leave you two out here alone. When have women out here ever been anything but alone? You can come back to camp with us. We're not going to move out for a few days. I'll let you use the supply wagon until this one's fixed up. That's awfully sweet of you, uh, Mr. Roddy Yates, ma'am. I'm Betsy Teal. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Yates. Telling you about the one I met at a 
church social in Pottersville last month. She was doing pretty good until her sister came along. Looked like she wanted to kill me. Her sister is still along, not to mention them drovers. seen so many clean and shining faces. Well, they all went down the stream after they ate Mr. Wishbone to shave. You think I need a shave? About as much as a hard-boiled egg does. How sorry am I I parted with you against the next meeting our joys will renew. We'll change the green laurel to the orange and blue. Let's hear Donegal. Yeah, good idea. Hey, sing Gypsy Davy for us, huh? All right, that's all. The bees are hungry and restless. And half of you are going to ride night guard, and the other half are going to have to get some sleep. Well, you can. It'll be a rough day tomorrow. Oh, he's so handsome. And he's so strong, too. You know, everybody does what he says. That's the kind of man that I'd like to have someday when I... No. Uh, you girls, uh, if you girls can sleep in the supply wagon, we'll have your own wagon ready by tomorrow. That's awful sweet of you, Mr. Yates. Good night, Mr. Yates. Good night. Emma? Why, well, Emmy, it's Billy. It's a real pleasure running to you girls way out here. Good night. It's a beautiful moon out tonight. And I thought I'd take Miss Betsy for a little walk. Show it to her. Would you please get out of our way? I ain't heard from Miss Betsy yet. Why, well, Emma, there wouldn't be no harm if I... You'll do as I tell you. Now, you wouldn't want to interfere with your sister going out with her bow, now, would you? you... Get up. You know, a man could get shot and killed for doing what you just did. Boy, there ain't nothing for you around here. I guess you felt pretty safe with all your drovers around. Some other time, though. Some of the time, things just might be a little different. You stay away from the bees, and you stay away from the women. Yeah, I know. The bees belong to you. Get moving. Good night, Miss Betsy. It's been a real pleasure. Miss Emma. Honey, get in the wagon. Mr. Yates, hmm? should I be grateful to you? Well, that depends. It depends on what you came here for. I came here to make sure you and your sister were all right. You'd be surprised how many men are worried about Betsy's safety, Mr. Yates. Well, she's a very pretty girl. And not for you. And not for any man in this West that's, that's been a graveyard for so many women's hopes and dreams. I was 13 when my mother died, and she was old, wore out. But she wasn't a day older than I am now. 
Mr. Yates, I'm sending Betsy back east as soon as I get enough money. We got folks there, and she'll get an education. And, and she'll marry a man who'll be able to look after her without his having to become a killer or a digger in the earth. And she'll live in a warm house when it's winter, and she'll have children, and, and there'll be a doctor looking after her and, and servants waiting on her. So, you see, Mr. Yates, you don't have to worry about Betsy at all. Who said I'm worried about just Betsy? Betsy, she's gonna do all right, you know, no matter where she is. But what you're talking about is what you want, what you like. No, I... Now, you've got five calves from us. You'll probably pick up some from some other herds. So you raise them and sell them. Put Betsy on the stagecoach going east. Well, that's fine. What are you gonna do? What happens to you? Uh, I, I didn't thank you for helping us. Well, I didn't come here to get uh, thanked. Then why did you come, Mr. Yates? I want to talk to you, I guess. Good night. Good night. Good morning, Miss Emma. I wonder if we could have a little milk for our coffee. Why, well, sure thing. You know, we was expecting you over here for breakfast this morning. Oh, Betsy had some things to wash out. She's down at the stream now. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, I tell you, it's wonderful. You think a girl's just a plain, ordinary little thing, and then all of a sudden she smiles and she's beautiful. Miss Emma? Good morning, morning Mr. Yates. Uh, Scarlet uh, says a wagon's just about ready. There's something about fixing the wheel. Or... Oh. The supply wagon's very nice. Calves are doing fine. It's going to be hard separating them from those cows when you go off. When I go off? Oh, uh, when are you moving the herd out? Uh, tomorrow morning. And we won't be in your way. <laughs> Hi, Betsy. You look pretty good to me. Maybe you don't realize it, Mr. Wallace. But I'm kind of mad at you. Oh, you still look good. You were mean to Emma last night. Well, that little old sister of yours is fixing to be an old maid. Are you? <laughs> That's what I think, too. Hey, you ever seen a buffalo hunt? No. Well, there's one going up in the hills right now. You want to come along with me and watch it? I'd like to, but I better not. Why? You afraid of me? <laughs> That's one thing I can't make him understand. I ain't afraid of any of you. Men are, are awful easy to handle, if you just know how. And you must have been born knowing how. <laughs> I was walking up the aisle with Mr. Yates waiting at the altar and the preacher 
and me in my beautiful wedding dress and veil. Oh. <laughs> and what do I do? I drop the pitcher of milk right in front of the admiring congregation. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy, come on out. Coffee's ready. Even if I did spill the milk. Betsy? you were talking about. Wouldn't be as much fun without you. You do like I tell you, I'll get mad at you. You talk like you was at a church social or something. I'm going back. You're gonna go riding with me. Weren't you the one who told me you knew just how to handle men? Oh, Billy, stop it! Back to camp. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Take this and put it in with our stuff. As far as anybody's gonna know, one of us shot him. Ha, huh, Jay, you know where Ryan's men are keeping an eye on the herd? We'll get him over to him. They're gonna want more than a dead body. Yeah, well, whatever they want, they're gonna have to come to me to get it. I want to keep the girls out of this if possible. It'd be easier if we told them. It's wonder we do things the easy way. Three days the drovers give us is gonna be up tomorrow morning. I got any more time. I'm buffalo ain't more than about half killed off. They'll come through unless we stop them. We'll stop them if we have to. Only if we have to. Those cattle are hungry. Ought to be a way we can let them come through here without hurting us. I'm gonna take a ride down and have a talk with that trail boss. You want me with you? Yeah. You backing off from a fight, Mr. Ryan? I'm up here after buffalo hides. That's all I'm after. Sorry, Cole, he's dead. How did that happen? One of the drovers brought him to us. Wouldn't say nothing. Put him in one of the wagons. You're still going down to the drovers, Mr. Ryan? Looks like I'm riding with you after all. Oh, Pete, calf wagon's all fixed. I can bring it in when you were going to. Well, they must hurry about it now. Yeah, it might be a little too late anyway. Uh, the young one's pretty worked up. I'll give her some medicine. She'll sleep for a while. And the sister wants to stay with her. Well, I can't stay in the chuck wagon. We gotta move the herd out. The girls are gonna have to be quit pushing it so hard. I'm just doing what Mr. Favor did. Uh, you're only doing it because you're trying so hard not to. men riding in, Mr. Yates. Yeah, how many? Just two of them. Want us to ride out there and turn them back, Roddy? No, no, let them come in.
you want? The man who shot my brother. Your brother got the bullet he deserved. Is that all you're gonna say? That's right. You bring a sheriff in here, I'll tell him exactly what happened. A sheriff? I'm carrying my law with me. Right on out of here. Now, which one of you was it? Do I have to choose? Maybe it was you. I shot your brother, Mr. Wallace. She's lying. Sure, she's lying. Billy couldn't have been killed by no woman. Does it hurt your pride to think a woman can kill just like a man? Who's she trying to protect? I'll put my money on you. You heard me right out of here. <sighs> the odds are a little heavy on your side. Mr. Yates, you're dead. The bullet that'll kill you ain't caught up with you yet, but it will. Ryan, I'm bringing that herd through right now. I thought we might be able to work that out, but there's blood in the way now. Quint, bring them in and I want to talk to them. Scarlet, how's that cap wagon? Ready to roll. Now bring it out. How long before we move out? About an hour. I'll ride on ahead and see how the trail is. Right. You could have made him believe you. Or were you afraid he'd think you were hiding behind a woman's skirts? Except I never wear any. Mr. Yates, I'm not sure I was right shooting Billy Wallace. Of course you were. I can't get it out of my mind. I, I might have been able to stop him without shooting. I don't know whether I killed Billy Wallace because he was dragging my sister off or because I was jealous. Jealous because no man would ever want me that much. You had no other choice. Men like Belly Wallace, you can find them anywhere. They see something they want, and they just reach out and grab for it. I sometimes even wish I was that way. Now the men are coming. I'll go wake Betsy up. We'll be ready when the calf wagon gets here. All right. Now, we reach the top of that plateau, there's going to be no turning back. There'll be 40 of them against a lot less of us. We've got to keep some men with the herd at all times. I don't know what chance we're going to have, but we're going to take it. So, any man wants to pull out, now's the time to speak up. There'll be no hard feelings. I guess you don't need to sign a piece of paper before a drover will fight. All right. Quince will pass out the rifles and supply wagon. Everybody make sure you got a fresh horse. We'll pull out as soon as everybody's ready. Mr. Wishbone, will you do me a favor? What? I want to write a letter to my ma in case anything happens up in the hills. Will you mail it for me? Son, I'm going to be right there with you, unless you think I'm too old for that sort of thing. The day you're too old to fight, Wish, the sun ain't going to rise. Uh, you're mighty well told. Anyway, you go ahead and write your letter if it'll make you feel any better. Marcy! Marcy! I see. Well, Mr. Wishbone, I'm sure gonna miss them calves. Well, you're a cook's louse, not a cow. Oh, my, you got me talking as foolish as you. Well, can I stay with him till we move out? Oh, all right. Mr. Wishbone, uh, where's Mr. Yates? Oh, well, he's probably down the picket line with Jesus. I guess he's too busy to bother with... with us. Will you tell him goodbye for me? Well, you know, I'm kind of busy myself. Why don't you just go on down and tell him? 
You really think I should? Why, sure. Well, I'm not that busy. I can't watch over your sister. Say goodbye. Well, um, I wasn't going to leave. But, oh, uh, well, you got your job to do. Your life to lead. Job that's taken you away. Life that's got no place in it for. Uh, it's no good, this country. It drives its men, it kills its women. Maybe. Maybe a hundred years from now, it'll be a good place to live in. There'll be a time for... something. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Well... A hundred years... probably won't be any candle drives. We get our lives right now. Not a hundred years. Anyway, you never even said you'd want to look twice at me, no matter where or when we were. I've already looked twice at you. For what it's worth, I'd like to look some more. For what it's worth? Pretty enough. You ain't pretty at all. But you'll do just fine. <laughs> the ranch is in, in, in terrible shape. The, the fences need fixing and all oh, the barn needs painting. Well, well, this darn drive's gonna take three, four months to get the railhead. The barn and the fence will have to wait until then. Oh, they'll wait. Fences in the barn, they'll wait. And I'll wait. You do that once more, you're gonna have to marry me. Oh. Don't say anything to that. Anyway. Of course, when, when you start fixing the fences and painting the barn, I might get to work on you. <laughs> I'd better not frighten you off. <laughs> it's going to be a long time waiting. I wish there was some way of speeding up time. Very happy to have met you, Mr. Yates. I'm very happy to meet you, Miss Emma. <laughs> Come back soon. I will. Oh, I almost forgot to say goodbye. Goodbye, Rowdy. Bye, Emma.
don't know. I did what I could. I don't know if it's gonna be good enough. I don't know if anything's gonna be good enough. Mr. Rowdy, Emma's asking for you. Oh, I have to take care of Betsy and not let her get too near the fire because cause she don't know it burns. Oh, it burns. Oh, is Betsy all right? She's fine. Oh, the, the barn's a disgrace. Look, looks terrible. Don't worry, I'll, I'll paint it. You paint the barn. And I'm fix the fences. Maybe you'll even marry me. Shh. But, but if you do, don't let me bring any milk to the church. I'll spill it. up on that hill. Signs of a man with a rifle. Horse tracks leading up into the hills. I'm riding up. I'll get the drovers together. So there's nothing to do with any drovers. Pete and I'll go with you. No, you won't. Well, uh, I'll get your horse for you, Ronnie. <laughs> I think maybe you did. And hollered from the hills now, and she'd never know. Not now. Well, she knew. Women do. They got a way in the one before you ever have to open your mouth. Of course, they like to be told, but they don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> Sister's pretty broken up. She got in the way. The bullet was meant for you. How does it feel to shoot a woman? I knew it would bring you up here. And that pleases you? Pleases me fine. Why, I'm not a girl. I'm not going to turn my back on you. That's the way you use a kill, isn't it? In the back? Try me. Right. I'll put a bullet in you before you get your gun out of your holster. You might. Right now, I'm not worried about living or dying, and you are.
His killing days are over. Uh, I'm sure sorry about that girl. You better get your men ready, because we're bringing that herd through. No, no, I, I ain't going to need any men. You go get your herd, and you bring it through on the west side of the plateau. We'll both get our job done. Uh, fair enough? Fair enough. Get your stuff in the supply wagon. Pete has some money. We're gonna buy this calf wagon off you, and that'll send you back east, your people. The calf wagon ain't worth that much, Mr. Yeats. I'm setting the price. Emma, she wanted you to go back east. I'd like you to let us send you. 